All right, well, Lance, you and I are here at the round table, and I'm not on the screen, but you are, and we have leaders in a summit from around the nation, and we're brothers, we're friends, all of us, but can you encapsulate as best as you can just this opening session? There was so much that happened. What was being shared by leaders from around this country about America, where we're at, and what is happening right now on our watch? Fortunate for me, I was taking notes during this session, not knowing I was going to deliver a book report. <laughs> but my, my friend Larry asked me, hey, do you have a minute? I knew something was coming. So imagine you've got around this table publishers, uh, movie producers, um, business owners, uh, bishops, theologians, former tennis star who now is in ministry. Really, you know, Rick Joyner gathers an eclectic group, I'll tell you. And so let me give you a, a list of what we were just kicking around for tomorrow. And this is like before the meeting tomorrow, people would share, here's what I like to talk about. Well, we have what is happening with the Asbury Revival. But not just the Asbury Revival, but look at the NFL Buffalo Bills game that got interrupted and we had that 20 minute long, you know, prayer meeting going on. Here you got a nation that's all upset about kneeling and not kneeling, but everybody's kneeling for a man's life to come back to him, who's a Christian, who's dying on the field. But uh, we, that Buffalo Bills moment was the moment God stepped in and then followed by Asbury, God steps in. And so let's connect the dots. We're in the meeting. What is God saying to us? Then what's interesting about a meeting like this, Larry, is that every individual's gifting reveals what their passion is and what their perspective is. So it's kind of like a great big puzzle where all the puzzle pieces are dumped out on the table and everybody puts their piece on the table and you start to look at what the picture is. So here's the different subjects. What about the revivals? Where's the revival going? Other revivals that are breaking out? Uh, what's the difference between revival and uh, maybe what, uh, what we are experiencing in, in the movements of God that may be just like a revival, but we're not aware that we're actually in one. And we could break that apart in another conversation. What about the false prophetic? There's evidently some challenge going on out there about the genuine and the counterfeit, or let's say the adolescent or the enthusiastic prophetic pattern of what a whole lot of people are running to versus the more seasoned prophetic words that are more selective in a different vein. And someone brought up, so we got to address that, but also the religious spirit, because there's a religious spirit even coming against Asbury and coming against, it's like an opinionated spirit on everything. So we're talking about religious spirit and a prophetic spirit coming to maturity. Um, what's going on with the Southern border? When you have five or six million people invading your boundaries as a nation, you are literally hemorrhaging your identity is a culture, and it's by design. Somebody is doing it, and this apathy has got to be dealt with. And so these leaders are saying, our own borders are not secure. Uh, we have a survey that was done by George Barna, courtesy of Mark Nuttall, funding it, uh, with some, uh, some investors to find out what really is the story in America. It's the first values survey done in America. More, in a sense, interesting than any of the McLaughlin studies I've seen on you know, political opinions on the border, on immigration, on marriage, blah, blah. This survey reveals that over 80% of Americans actually are proud of their nation. They don't hate it. Well, you don't hear that in the news. You don't hear that in the campuses. You don't hear that in entertainers. Guess what? The elites are completely out of touch with America. That's what this survey shows us. The family is the most important mountain of all the seven. Everyone wants, they feel the government's a threat to their family. They want to protect their family from the overreach of government. So there's going to be an interesting data point there, like 75 to 80% saying family is more important to me than anything else. Well, you didn't know that, did you? And I didn't know it either. So we're going to cover all that detail. Artificial intelligence. We've got these new, these new tools like ChatGPT and various other ones that are coming out where they're doing your homework for you. They're thinking for you. They put a business plan for you. They write things. In other words, check about uh, what that ChatGPT says about, as one brother said, Ask about the Muslim Brotherhood, you'll find out that it's all pro-Muslim Brotherhood. It doesn't have any facts about it. Talk about, uh, like, for instance, put a name in there, and you'll find out that someone you thought was actually celebrated is vilified. Chat, GPT, and these programs are only as enlightened as the programmer is, and if you've got a woke programmer, the reach of these tools is going to be scary. 
Uh, so church combating the woke culture was another one of those areas, and these new uh, intellectual tools come out, like artificial intelligent interactive computers. Um, what's going to happen with voter integrity? We don't have voter integrity. We'll never get an election right. What's going to be happening with Trump and DeSantis? Someone brought that up. So presidential cycles. We're going to hit one in two years. What's coming up and what can we learn about that? How about protecting children in schools? And uh, where, where is that going? Where, how are we even dealing with that? Because they're, they're being literally abducted mentally by the, by the woke perversion. So these are the issues that were at the table, various ones we're bringing up. This is all stuff to discuss perspectives on. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm stirring this up. If you were at the table, you put your hand up and say, well, what about this? What about this? And believe me, it rolled into that too. What about the economy? What's going to happen politically? What's going to happen spiritually and socially um, in the future coming to America? And then we got into some other discussions about the difference between awakening and revivals. Awakening being the collective corporate rising of the tide, revivals being waves that fill the, uh, that add to this ultimate awakening cycle. Bobby Connors then broke in on something which was rather interesting. October 4th, he was visited by four angels. Four angels came in almost like whirling, their wings were almost like helicopter sounds coming in. And when they came in, it, it almost startled, well, it did startle him because they, be they began to talk about the urgency of the mobilization of the body of Christ for a time of war. And uh, to mobilize, to mobilize a divine urgency to awaken the warriors, to put them on the front lines, to deploy them, and to, uh, and to mobilize the body. And he went to a, a military person after that visitation, and he said, what's the, what's the, you know, the military definition of mobilize? This seemed to be a militant visitation he had. And the answer he got was uh, basically, Mobilization is getting your troops to the most advantageous place to engage the enemy. Mobilization is the body of Christ having to move to the advantageous places, where I would say it's locally now. Now I'm getting my own thinking in here. You can see here where I'm going to go with this. It's going to be local in the school board, local in the mayor's office, local in the police force, local in the, local in the teachers, local in the churches, local in the workplace. Wherever your locale is, you look at the seven mountains and say, Occupy till he comes and push back against the darkness and uh, God's mobilizing his army in order to move forward now one of the one of the brothers that was there is um, John Dawson a really famous guy from Youth with a Mission and he said that he's been all over the world he comes in and everywhere he's going he's hearing the same theme that people are feeling like they're in the minority surrounded by a hostile majority he said it's the Elijah syndrome in every country where people are feeling they're alone against the evil that is so bigger and organized in them. And the Lord says, look up and look down. You'll see the angels and you'll see a lot more with you than you think. There are thousands that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. You're not alone. In fact, you could be under a mind trip where there's certain elites controlling academia, entertainment and media and news cycles and political offices. They control those high places, but they create an illusion that everybody's with them. The majority are not with them. The majority are with you. And many of them are about to become believers. Many of them instinctively don't like what's going on. They're confused. You, and so he said, uh, John said, all over the world, God's breaking this mentality that we're isolated and outnumbered. You're not alone. There's more with you than you think. And the angelic realm is surrounding what the devil's doing and is about to close in on it. So uh, when you got that kind of uh, conversation going on, Larry, and that, by the way, was just discussing what we're going to be discussing. Can you imagine what the discussion will actually be like?